please welcome now our guests for tonight, Maria Claudia Clemente of Lavix. <laughs> and Hilde Leon of Leon Wohlhage Wernig Architect here in Berlin. We will have this dialogue in English. So now let's okay. start. Welcome. Okay. Let's start. Claudia, you start, you're the first. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Well, first of all, I want to thank the BDA to having invited, and also I want to make a lot of compliments for this very interesting, um, let's say, organization. Um, before, uh, before starting presenting two projects of the office, I wanted to share with you and with Ilde some thoughts about the relation between the urban drift, urban form, and architecture. So you will see there are some very introductive slides about what is the relation, what is urban drift, of course everyone knows, and how we can enhance or reinforce or promote the urban drift. There are some kind of thoughts. Of course, uh, what you will see is part of my being Italian, a part of my heritage, so I think it would be very interesting to exchange ideas with uh, different cultures. So for this first slide, you know there's a very famous images. This is the cent historical center of Parma. And this is San Diego Le Corbusier. They can both come from Colliro, Color City. So now let's say that what is what I want to promote here is a kind of learning from the past, learning from the recent past and the old past. So in the bad and the good uh, heritage that we can learn from. So on the first slide on the left, you see there's a very famous uh, the drawings of Haussmann, uh, superimposed on the historical structure of <coughs> Paris. And what is, you know, that was the, you know, the, this urban structure of Baudelaire or the urban drift of the Flaneur. And on the, on the, on the right is very famous, sorry for the pronunciation, Ibersheimer, Ibersheimer, Ibersheimer always don't say in the proper way. Uh, so you see there is this uh, kind of uh, let's say, um, opposition or confrontation between what was the urban tissue, the historical urban tissue, what is the modern urban tissue. So <coughs> the historical tissue, urban tissue, what is the <coughs> Italian historical st urban structure, promote mixed programs and behaviors, promote surprise and unexpected experience. Whereas, the, you see on the right side, you see the, the left side is Siena, on the right side you see Brasilia. So, I mean, let's say two really clear examples of different urban structure and way of approaching the city. On the right side you see Brasilia, where the functional segregation means that the modern city divided the programs and divided the zoning. So, let's say in a way, avoiding the, the mixité and the complex behavior in the city. Urban texture. Uh, urban fabrics, let's say. On the left side, you see a very famous Pianta del Nolli that everyone knows, uh, where the public, the public space uh, is, let's say, across the city and is spread all over, also in the buildings. Whereas the modern, the modern age created urban objects and not urban texture, which is a very different approach. And in some way, even if it seems that they are all both very old examples, the right way, the, the, the example on the right is really, again, very much diffused in the global city nowadays. Now, two projects. Two projects of the office. One is completed, one is under construction. And you will see how this way, the approaches that I was mentioning are really uh, part of both of the projects in a different way. So first, let's say with must. This is a very uh, recent completed project. We, it opened in the first week of October last year. It's a, it's a, it's a result of a private competition. It's a, it's a building in Bologna. Uh, it's a private building with a very public soul, as I wanted to explain. So first of all, even if it's a building in a private area, what we tried really to do is to be the building part of the public domain of the city. So not just a building, an object in the space, but a structure, a, de a device, a public device. There was an interface between the city and the private property. So as you see, the, the building has a, 
as you saw, this is the, this is the public face. So the building as a public face, a private face. In this way, the building is a kind of, yes, a kind of device that take the people and the city inside. The, just a very few words about the competition of the client. The client wanted to build this building is not uh, is a build, service building for the employees and for the city. So, so you see here. No, sorry, I wanted to use another things. This is the building here in the very small drawings. As you will see, the building here here is the is an industry. So there are big buildings here. Uh, that are the production buildings. And here is the neighborhood of residential. There is a big void here. So the building is a kind of interface also on the scale, between the small scale of the buildings and the big scale of the industry. The building is not a block. The building is a very open building. So the building offers to the users a multiplicity of paths, multiplicity of streets and roads. The building is a kind of structure that is uh, like a it has the same structure of uh, urban tissue, uh, aggregated in a different way. So you see that the main path for the user, as you see here, is, this, is a public path that starts from the city, so it enters in this big ramp, then as you see here in these diagrams, then you cross to the museum, cross the museum, and then arrive to the auditorium. So there is a, a main public path that is connected to the public domain of the city, and then offers, and then there are other very many other paths, as you see from these pictures. This one, this is a square on the first floor that is, a, 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 is considered as a public square. There is a cafeteria. And it is, let's say, an open air museum. So the building really, this is a very famous sketch of Smithson that, start, that talks about urban tissue. And finally, Two words about the building, uh, what it hosts. Uh, it hosts very different uh, programs. A canteen for a canteen for the employees, a um, crash kindergarten for the, for the children of the employees, an auditorium for the city, a museum for the city, museum of the company, uh, a caf cafeteria, a, a foyer of course, a, Let's say a gym, fitness, a wellness center. So the program was so complex and so dif difficult. And let's say that the competition was not clear, was not, well, we were free to organize all these programs in different way, how we wanted. What we decided, so to create a unique organism that was able to, in, to, to, was able to create not just singular objects, but to create a structure that was able to behave like a micro city, so paths, square, public space, mm -hmm. and being a really an interface between not just a block in the private area, but kind of membrane between the public and the private. The second project I want to show you is under construction, is in Rome. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a building, there are several buildings, it's called Città del Sole. <coughs> so, we, we had to put together, I don't know if it's clear, it's very clear. Uh, we, want, we had to put together a normal master plan program, so residential, commercial, and offices. Uh, the, the area is very interesting because it's on the edge of the historical city, um, just before the first ring, the Tangenziale, and it's in front of a very nice, interesting uh, Sabatini neighborhood. Sabatini is a Roman architect in the neighborhood of the first let's say, 1920s, 1920. Uh, so we, what we wanted to try, you see here some sketches, uh, some diagrams of the urban, t of the relation, even it's not so, because it's very clear, but the relation between what we created, what we designed, and the neighborhood around. And we really mm -hmm. wanted strongly to create an urban tissue, so not just a series of, of objects, just but continuing the tissue that we had around with a different language and different, of course, uh, yes, a shape, but with the same uh, conception, uh, finding a lot. So that you will see there is a central square here that really is a, now is very visible uh, on site, which is really the, has a very strong relation with all the surroundings. So this is the first building that's just completed.
there are differences. So another, another concept, the first concept was creating an, a really a, 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 an urban tissue. The second concept was giving back to the city what we were, we were occupying on, in terms of public domain. So as you see here, this is the area that we occupy. This is an existing building. This is an existing building that we, will be a public library. So this is the area that we occupied and we gave back to the city in terms of public domain and public space. On the second floor, new squares similar to the previous project, but in this case they're really public because they are in the city, open up to the city. And then on top of this new square that are the same shape of the space that we occupied on the ground floor, there are three buildings. This is the residential area. This is a, this is a residential building. This is another residential building. There are duplex. I don't know if it's duplex. Yes, duplex. So there are uh, two floor houses with terrace on the top. So let's say urban villa. And this is offices. And, the, and the, this, this platform uh, has commercial, so shops, small shops, and offices <coughs> all around. This is the, um, it's not very visible, but this is the squares that we have on the, here. This is a picture taken here. So again, very, a lot of attention to the, if you remember the plan of Nolly, this is very part of our heritage. So giving back, uh, let's say that the public space, the public domain enters in the building and is spreading around in the building and in the urban tissue. So this is, this is a kind of uh, part of our, I think, really uh, heritage. And you will see how the intervention is completely porous, completely open. Uh, so the complexity in terms of urban drift and the urban drift also in the other building in Bologna you can get lost let's say in a way between brackets in these buildings you can go around you don't have a unique path but you can discover uh, you can discover you can experience the space and the buildings and the master plan in a different complex way that is not just one way and really try to encourage this complexity in the tissue and then the project that we do even if they are only only, let's say, buildings. So we, what we think is very important to create structures more than objects, public spaces more than uh, just piece of the city. This is more or less what we are trying to do. Okay. To you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm curious about uh, our debate, our different approach uh, of the similarity and the differences between the two countries. Um, I would like to, um, to briefly show you two of, of, of our projects. Um, the first one is in uh, Stuttgart, in the center of Stuttgart. And it's uh, surrounded by a lot of traffic and large oversized <coughs> street. Even if it's close to the, to the center, you, it seems that you are in the periphery uh, with over and underground crossings and uh, and, uh, and really not very urban. It's uh, very difficult to, uh, to go from one side to the other side uh, to cross the streets. So uh, this was a, even this was a competition with a private client. <coughs> the cl private client um, obviously, uh, um, it, it's, it's, it's a, not a really complex program, but it's, it's a combination of housing on top, two floors on top, obviously, it was dem uh, demanded by the city. The client didn't want it at all, but he was forced to do it. And the interesting thing was this, um, these flats uh, were the first thing which he, he could uh, sell and he could uh, give because uh, uh, even in Stuttgart there were some difficulties to, um, mm, to, uh, for the offices um, to find a client uh, to, to, to take it. Anyway, uh, on the other side, uh, we have, uh, you see it here. Wait a second. Here the ox, uh, this was not good. Uh, uh, this is uh, the, the street, the surrounding, these big streets on, on Stuttgart. We, you know we have uh, Daimler, Porsche, and all this uh, big uh, automobilistic firms, so it's, uh, uh, easy to, uh, since years to build big streets, but uh, on the back side you have uh, this little church from, from the um, uh, 19th century and uh, this is quarter is quite different. So our approach in this uh, situation was really to, 
to calm the situation, to, to rebuild the block in this very um, strange figure. It, it, it's not very precise, this figure. So uh, we, we, we tried to find a figure which is somehow uh, really surrounding the situation. Uh, our idea was, in, in a certain way, quite conservative uh, for this urban situation, uh, uh, if I compare it with <coughs> your approach, uh, to, to give the outline of, uh, of the houses to, to cover the polygonal uh, border and, um, and to have a quite um, uh, clear definition between the private, outside, the streets, the blocks, and, and, uh, <coughs> and the places, and, and, uh, and to have a... a a courtyard which is uh, private uh, and for us it even was very important then to find the architectural figure with, with these um, uh, places of um, uh, uh, this, uh, how to, to organize it with, uh, to find really in the inner space even a good architectural figure in, in the inside. Uh, this is one project which I really shortly wanted to show and uh, the next one is in Berlin which is not yet built. In this case uh, the urban structure was totally given by a master plan. I would say it's very difficult to, to, um, uh, to build something in Berlin without a master plan and so we had to fulfill the, this given block, the height, the, the, <coughs> uh, the length and the depths. And, um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a Kunstcampus, so-called Kunstcampus, behind uh, the Hamburger Bahnhof. Uh, I think you all will know it. Uh, uh, and, um, and it's along uh, this uh, canal. Uh, a very nice situation. On the other side, you, are, uh, you will have a, a place or a, a garden somehow. Uh, so uh, all sides are uh, more or less the same uh, quality. And uh, this was our definition for uh, this situation. Mm -hmm. to n not to have one side which is uh, a back side and one side which is a, uh, which is a front side, but but all sides are front sides. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it, it was not our decision. You know this Rikhalle, uh, and, and we, we have this Hamburger Bahnhof, and the, and the urban decision, which was done by a competition, uh, done by others, uh, the, the decision was to have these objects. This is Milla Maranta, this is Carsten Roth from Hamburg, Milla Maranta, a uh, well-known office uh, from Basel. Uh, and we, we are here in the middle. And so um, this is a, maybe a certain difference, um, uh, maybe a more, uh, con uh, in a way, conservative, uh, um, because I think uh, in Berlin we have a special situation to come up uh, this situation. Well, <clears throat> we will discuss it. Uh, and uh, what I want to show here, uh, obviously, is uh, my connection uh, to Italy because um, um, I was studying in Venice uh, in the time when the Biennale in 81 took place uh, the, uh, this, with this famous Strada Novissima and uh, with uh, Aldo Rossi's Teatro del Mondo. <coughs> and um, and I, I must say that, um, that I'm very influenced by the Italian approach of urban research and the typology studies which were done in Venice at that time and, um, and, and uh, the reflection of the European cities. As we know, uh, it, uh, uh, it was, the Italians were, had a big influence even in the IBA in 80, 84, 87. And, um, and, and when we look to, to, to our approach to urban um, situation, um, especially after the opening of the wall, uh, it was uh, uh, this plan, uh, everybody here will know it, um, uh, this uh, Planwerk Innenstadt, which defined very clearly what is, uh, 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 what is uh, the um, built pattern and the clear definition between streets and, uh, and 
even to calm in a, in a certain way uh, the destruction of the city, especially in the center, but it's not only... So this was somehow the approach to, to look to the city in every place. And this is a big debate in this moment in Berlin, uh, in, in any place. And uh, if we, I don't want to discuss uh, the culture forum, but uh, because uh, it, it's, uh, it's discussed in uh, in uh, in in every place, but uh, maybe we can start from this point. And I'm asking really myself if if we have uh, to to calm every uh, all situation in Berlin. Uh, with this uh, so, uh, very clear pattern between private and public and uh, housing and streets. And uh, yesterday evening I had the, uh, the possibility to listen to David Chipperfield's speech for the, uh, in, in front of the Friends of the National, National Gallery. And, um, and he was this... Um, <coughs> uh, he pointed out uh, the situation of Berlin, that uh, the debate is more important than the, the facts or the plan uh, on one hand, and, uh, and why uh, we, we have to make order in every place. And, I, uh, and while he was speaking, I was looking um, from, the, uh, from the platform of the National, uh, National Gallery of Mies van der Rohe, and I was overlooking the the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, how can I say, the, the city line uh, in front of me with this big, huge, uh, uh, enormous uh, building and architectural object. And so I was asking myself how much we need uh, to, to, to calm everything and every place in this city nowadays with master plans and with clear definition of space. And uh, I think it could be a good, uh, good start for our debate about the relationship between architecture and urban uh, design. design. But for example, in Italy now, in fact, I wanted out that you said it's very difficult to build something in Berlin without a master plan. Uh, in Italy, it's completely the opposite. Uh, there is no tradition nowadays. It's very funny. In fact, there is a big debate. I think also Shinozuki probably this debate about that because in Italy now, sometimes there are good buildings, uh, but there is no really discussion about the city for the, the urban form, which is very funny because uh, I mean are. exactly <laughs> it's very funny. But there is no debate about urban form. No debate about urban shape and the relation between architecture and urban. urban. It is very, it's very, and now it's very complicated because also, also in Rome, which is, I mean, is a, I think it's a very important city now. All the new, the new part of the city that are going to be built, uh, are very they lack of debate and discussion about urban yeah. forms. So there are Maybe just islands. This is very similar in a way. Mm -hmm. We can discuss also between the relation between Rome and Berlin, which are some similarities and some differences. But in Italy, there is completely different. So we, are, we don't have this tradition of master planning now. Maybe you, you don't have it because you have all this beautiful, very clear <coughs> uh, historical cities, which uh, everybody in this uh, room will, will likes it and uh, loves it and uh, goes every year, uh, uh. five times a year to Italy to look at all this <laughs> ni nice Parma and Siena and I don't know, Venice cities. And uh, so maybe um, this, um, the difference is because we had this big changes, uh, not only through the war, but even the war, uh, but um, um, but we had these big changes after the war with uh, this big street and uh, the uh, highways and this you didn't have. You had a lot of, uh, um, in Italy you have a lot of um, changes even in the 30s. We know uh, every city in Italy has a big intervention of the fascist uh, period. Yeah. But all these interventions of this um, period, they took in a certain way uh, uh, the, um, the historical pattern of streets and places and, and this and that, uh, but um, it was somehow uh, integrated 
with the urban structure. Uh, with, with the urban structure. Yes, it was, but now it's not. When, I mean, master planning is a very complicated topic, I think, because all these master plans that you saw everywhere in the world are all the same, no? And then at the end, they become no pl a place with no soul and with no, with no complexity, because when you do a, and I really believe, I think that creating a piece of the city, part of the city needs really um, a big thing, I mean, a, a deep thoughts about how it will become. Because it's very easy that when you go nowadays in the, all these global city, like this big city, and you see this big master plan, they're all the same, they're all the same block, and it's very complicated to create a piece of real city, which mm. is not just a, an island put somewhere. So I think that there is a, that we, there is a lot of debate to do about that, because <laughs> now we live in cities in Europe, we don't have to build anymore. I mean, okay, we can build something, but is, 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 uh, we are, at, at the, let's say, between brackets, at the end of a, a long path, no? But, but maybe if you go around the world, is now yeah. they, there is a lot of human culture to be, to be diffused. And I think that European culture should really, could really help. So I think that debating about this master planning and urban structure is very important. But, uh, but why in Berlin? I'm very curious to know why in Berlin is how this master planning culture is yeah, I, 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 as you have seen, um, um, maybe there was a really uh, a need uh, to think about how how Berlin can continue um, uh, after the reunification, and uh, and there was even a, a debate. Uh, as we know, uh, uh, there was a big pressure on Berlin in the nineties, and so. Uh, the master plan of this was uh, somehow even a defending of the city, uh, 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 because otherwise everybody has, has yeah. would have done uh, whatever. whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. And somehow it's interesting, if you, you go to Sao Paulo, uh, I, I think there's no master plan done in the last uh, <coughs> 40 years. And it's interesting how the city uh, is um, creating it, uh, or, or grown up uh, by its own. But um, um, on the other hand, uh, we are somehow defending the city, still the, the city and the urban point. place. And uh, I think uh, somehow I agree in a certain way, but my problem is, do we have to do it in every place and everywhere? Is there any possibility to, to look at the city in a, in a different way? Is there any possibility to, to, to have different... Uh, possibilities of intervention. So I I, I don't agree for, uh, that we are inter uh, we, uh, that we do intervention in the culture forum like we did it in in the in the Friedrichstraße. I, I think Berlin is so interesting mm -hmm. and uh, and um, and it's even very difficult from my point of view to. Um, uh, to look, uh, the creation of city we, needs time. Exactly. And I think it's very difficult <coughs> to, to, to look after five years if the city is, 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 is done. Uh, I think we need 50 years more than this. If we, if we go today, I, I was in Brazil uh, recently, so um, I, I saw uh, Brasilia, and uh, it, it changed a lot, especially the super blocks. The super blocks works quite well, obviously because we are in the subtropic uh, area. <coughs> it's totally green, it's totally warm, and these uh, big blocks in, in the middle of, uh, of, of huge uh, trees, and this works, but I think um, we need time to... Um, also, what I think what is interesting is re thinking about the terms of density, yeah. uh, in terms of density, in terms of relation between piece of the city. For example, Rome, that can have some similarities. Some, some of you know Rome quite well, probably. And Rome is, uh, is made of, there is a city center, of course, but Rome is bigger. It's the less dense city of Europe. 
uh, out of the historical center. Out of the historical center is very spread in the country. Is a very low density, less than Berlin, related to the surface of the city, mm -hmm. and um, and there are some pieces of the city which are really so, um, let's say, as a so low density, so so low, yeah, so low density, so low mixite, fun, fun, programmatic fun, functionality, that it seems that you are not in a city in a way. Mm. So, what is the big debate now in Rome, for example, which can be kind of interest, is how to uh, make the city more, no more compact, more, more homogeneous. So Rome is made of islands, for different reasons now, it's too long to explain, it's made of islands that, so in this sense there are some similarities, it's made of islands that has grown around the Roman structure, so the Roman roads, the green country, piece of the country that we have in the city, are different reasons, and now the, the municipality decided to create some urban nodes, new, new urban nodes, urban center. So there are 18 urban center, new urban center. We are designing one public? of them. No, I don't have the, exactly. This is the this point. This is a question. This is the very important is point. It? Because this is the problem of Paris. Huh? This is the problem of the big city, that they need to have different nodes in, this, in the city to avoid that the people feel kind of abandoned from the city. So now in Rome, everyone on Saturday goes to the city center to do shopping or uh, to the commercial center. So they're trying to do these nodes. The problem is that the, the land is not public. So they are struggling to do them. We are designing one of them, which is very big. Uh, we have a lot of problems and troubles for two reasons. First of all, because one thing is to say, let's do 80 new centers. The other thing is say, what do we do with new center? What do we and put what inside? Is center? What is a center? First question. Shopping center. Exactly. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. So first, what is a center? Which is the big question, the first question. They are also trying to do the same in Paris, uh, with the great Paris. Um, then, wh who is the owner of the land? Second question. Third, what do we put in terms of programs in a center? Do we need to give an uh, identity? Mm -hmm. Or we, we create a new center, copying the old center, what is very complicated. So at the end of the day, in the, in the new center that we are designing, we, are, we say, okay, let's put some cultural, mm -hmm. uh, let's say scaling, so small scale squares, big squares, residential, mixed commercial, and then we wanted to have some cultural center, a theater, because close to Cineshita. And then the owner said, private, Kind of pri pri private public said, ah, ma, the commercial center, uh, we don't gain money. Uh, okay, so now next question. How do we create a center if the, the, the land is private? And also, let's say, apart the, private, the property of the land, what, is, what does it mean creating a new center? And this is very important. And in Rome, there is no discussion about that. No one is creating... Uh, let's say a congress or lectures or debating about that. It's a very important uh, because this is, I think creating a center nowadays could be very useful in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, in Mumbai, where there is no center and they need to have some poles, some point in this, this biggest city. So I think that is very important. What we should, we could learn from the European cities is what is the center and how can we, so now we are, the, we are thinking in the office a lot about this, how we can create a new center in the periphery, uh, what does it mean, how can we can superimpose function programs, how can we can create complexity and urban drift, because it's very important that in a city center you can uh, have different opportunities, different possibilities, uh, not like Brasilia, <clears throat> or you can go from there to there, full stop. So this is, I think, a very important topic that we are dis discussing mm. now. Um, well, uh, when you presented your project in, in, um, in Bologna... The, the, we wanted uh, to create a center yeah. in a way. And <coughs> this, for me, is, I, I don't know any project in, in Berlin or in Germany that a private commissioner is doing so much uh, public uh, spaces. I think uh, if there's something <coughs> private, uh, they do private. Maybe there's a little um, kindergarten because the city forced mm -hmm. them to do the kindergarten or something like this. But um, 
um, there is a really clear distinction between between the the private and, and the public. The public is paid by the public. The library is paid by the public, uh, but uh, there is no private who is paying uh, any any, <coughs> any um, library. So uh, for me, your project um, In fact, is, is somehow uh, interesting, f um, even from the point of view of how it is organized. In fact, she wanted the client wanted to she wanted to you know Olivetti I think no Olivetti Olivetti, Olivetti yes. yes obviously she, yeah mm. she wanted to go f push Olivetti forward and saying Olivetti invented and gave services to the employees basically uh, she wanted to create something not only for the employees but also for the city for the neighborhood because the building is in the periphery not not. Bologna is very small, so the periphery of Bologna is uh, not uh, far away from the center. <laughs> no, I mean it's 15 minutes by car, or probably also less. And she wanted to create something that could be could work a different scale. So the scale of the employees, which is very close, the scale of the neighborhood, which is medium scale, and then the scale of the city with the auditorium. And she wanted really to create a center, and it works now that it's open to the public every day. Uh, there is a lot of people that goes, and really for the for the neighbors, it, for the city also. Now it's part of the art fair of Bologna, uh, so it's, it is a center, of okay. course, in the scale of this of the building. So it, it, I think that we succeed, and we are very happy of that in creating because we're very ambitious the pro the project, mm -hmm. ambitious sense that we wanted to create an organism. But is it somehow like publicity for the for this? Um, a firm like Olivetti once they did this big intervention in uh, what was the city yeah. Ivrea. Ivrea Ivrea and um, uh, and, and somehow um, it was connected uh, with with uh, it was somehow a branding uh, and. <coughs> And here, mm, but in in a way, you it, don't have it. I, no, I, the, I, the maybe company, you, you have an example. I, I don't have one. I'm. I, it reminds me a little bit in uh, at a situation in Istanbul, for example, where, uh, uh, where a lot of private or uh, foundations are uh, doing public-private intervention, and the big families. Uh, it's somehow a publicity for for. For, for the certain uh, companies, <coughs> but in a way, I think that she she has a double a double uh, because she the, pres the, the 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 client is a woman and she had uh, the president of this company, she had a double at least if not triple aim. One was to give an identity to the company more than branding because the company produce mechanism, so it's not a branding company, it's a, a company without any brand. I mean, they produce mechanism for machine who, for packaging. So, I mean, it's world leader, but it's not a branding company. And she wanted to create an identity to the group. So this is an identity in terms of visual identity with the building. So. The, second, the second, I think, aim, which is very ideal, because she's a, I mean, she's a kind of romantic person. Uh, she wanted to open up the company to the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, and this is, I think, what we really should learn from this, because in the world now, all these gated communities, they are being created everywhere at the opposite. Everyone tends to close itself yeah. in the city, protecting from what is outside. She said the opposite, she said, okay, let's open to the city, let's part the company be part of the public domain of the city. And I think this is what we interpreted with the, the, with the project, because we felt that there was this will of uh, open and at the same time welcoming the city inside. And this is, this is probably the reason why we won the competition, because we correctly interpreted this desire. And the third aim was to give back to the city, because the building was quite expensive. Uh, and is open to the public, to the scholarship, to the children, to, everywhere, to everyone. The third was to give back in terms also of money to the city what she had from the city. So, but she's very important in Bologna. She sounds a, very humanistic. Yeah, it's very humanistic. <laughs> it is very humanistic. She's a philanthro philanthropical, mm, okay. I don't know in English, philanthropical. So. so I think that what we, we, in terms of client, I think is a ideal mm. uh, because she's a, yeah.
so and, and the building at the end uh, works <coughs> quite well uh, as as I know you don't know Berlin quite well but obviously you know Berlin through the um, no. literature uh, architecture um, uh, debate and uh, it would be nice to know how is it for you to be here. In the same, I yeah. can ask you to Rome. Yeah. For Rome, yes. Okay. But, but I know Berlin a little bit. Uh, I also know it from the books. I know the project of very important archipelago project of Jung Ungers, like everyone probably. But what I feel in Berlin, which is very interesting, compared to Rome at least, or compared to a lot of city, the in terms of architecture also now. The scale and the the scale is large and less and not dense. But also Rome is not dense, but it's different. It's a different scale and also different relation between the building and the streets and between this from who knows Rome a little bit and compared to Berlin I'm looking at Matthias. And also the the, the it's, you seem you feel that you are not always in a city. It's, it feels that you are in a, it's, yeah, it's a very calm, let's say, calm and quiet and low density kind of village, a big village. Compa no, I mean, in terms of also urban form, because you have a big void inside, uh, every, everything is, there are big interruption. For example, all these cultural mm. forms that I know quite well, of course, like all the architects of the world, is it seems all this part of Berlin, uh, yeah, all this part of Berlin, which is modern in the way it is modern in terms of ar architectural culture, because there are buildings which are mm. spread in the void. There is no urban structure, uh, and it, this is the center. For me, it's always been very fun. I said, how this can be the center? Because for an Italian person, the center is dense, compact, crowded, mixed. Uh, complex now there is and a, a lot of traffic let's say there is all, no mm -hmm. not only in terms of traffic in terms of urban stru yeah. structure uh, no uh, and Rigotti once uh, said uh, many years ago he said Berlin is a luxurious periphery <laughs> and it was uh, <coughs> uh, it was before uh, the war was cut down but uh, somehow it's uh, it's 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 still a, a luxurious periphery and we are made Maybe we are looking for um, places to uh, to define the city, and uh, this probably. is obviously the probably. debate we have nowadays, especially about this. Place. But why? What is uh, what is the what is the debate about? Sorry, about a cultural forum. Uh, the, the the debate is um, uh, if if we should uh, uh, do a new layer of urban urban structure or uh, if we should keep it like it is or to complete it as it was a thought in the 50s to to add some other big objects because uh, yes. as we know if we, if we remember the plan of Sharoun yes. uh, in between the national gallery and uh, the philharmonie there was another big object and the, it was some you know like big elephants mm -hmm. lying in the city <coughs> and uh, and on the other hand uh, there is a, a big debate about this uh, to say oh finally we need uh, a real city and a real city means in berlin you have blocks and you have streets and, and the, you have the places. and, and this is this is uh, maybe you see it in a different way but this is a uh, two two point of views uh, i i would say to be very, uh, maybe be a little bit simple even but uh, somehow I think it's impossible to, because the, the structure of blocks is a typical oh, of oh, well, 19th that, century no? yeah, but, uh, late 19th century you can do it Osman uh, structure let's say for because we say yeah. which is different from the for the complex structure of the historical city and is different on from the modern urban from the yeah. modern model that this is a very good example so I mean, it's very funny that... Uh, yeah, uh, it's not ended. As uh, uh, Chipperfield yesterday said, the, the debate is more important than the result of the, of, of the debate. But uh, uh, he, he, he mentioned that he, he, do, he doesn't know any other city which is so debated as in Berlin. You have a place, you have Tempelhof, you have this, you have this, but 
there's immediately but probably because a large debate <coughs> what is fine. how it should be or if to build or if not and how to build and how not and but probably because who in has Berlin, the power and what who is not. missing is the, the typical historical center that uh, because it's, it's made of different island also Berlin yeah. uh, but there is no a unique point which is yeah. uh, probably the the, yeah, the main is, different the main yeah. differences between Rome and Berlin. Because but this is even the difference between uh, Berlin and Munich and Berlin and uh, Düsseldorf and I don't know all the other... Uh, uh, Münster, or, uh, if you speak about uh, smaller cities, uh, uh, the, there's a, a clear reference to the center, like in Paris or like in Rome. But London is similar to Berlin on the other way because London is a city where there is no center, no mm -hmm. unique center. Uh, there's Piccadilly, but Piccadilly to a Londinian is just a commercial center. London is made of islands, again, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's made of islands, and every island has a center. And for a Londinian, it's very steady. Let's meet in the center. Everyone say, what do you mean? Uh, there is no yeah, center. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this, the the quarter is very important, because the, you, you, we are talking about where do you live? You are living in Charlottenburg, no, I'm living in Prenzlauer Berg, or I don't know. Uh, or uh, uh, the reference is um, is really the quarter, not the quarter, the the bezirk, the district, the district, uh, uh, not the quarter. Maybe even uh, in in the district there are different quarters, but uh, uh, the reference I would say is very strongly. So it's very, it's very. But uh, I think it's okay. Uh, therefore, the whole debate <coughs> about creating a center is somehow. A false debate in a, in a way. Why to create a center if historically uh, there was a center but uh, there was always a reference. It may be because Berlin is created in, in 1920 with, uh, with the creation of Big Groß Berlin which was uh, at the end uh, 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 the conclusion uh, uh, of, of different cities like uh, Charlottenburg, which was a total independent city, totally independent. And anyway, now, I want nowadays it's, it's, it's a district. But, you know, uh, in our uh, minds, our, our, we are very much related to these stories, I would say. I wanted to go back also to the, the you said that uh, your project were in a way conservative related to ours. I, I think that there are different solutions and different points. In our projects, yes. the one in Bologna is special and we are talking about the one in Rome um, is, a <coughs> is an, an area on the edge of the historical center. Yeah. So it's really on the edge. Next to that intervention, there is the Tiburtina station. Mm -hmm. So, which is a very important station. Now, but is, uh, this is very important. Hmm? Now, this is very important is because it's the main ICE. station in Rome, let's say, it is just close to the intervention. So, there is on the, on the edge. So, was correct not to, let's say, to dialogue with the historical part, which is uh, just in front of us, but at the same time, creating an edge. So, a, 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 a mem membrane between outside and inside, in a way. So, probably was not... <coughs> was not correct to complete. Because no. sometimes in your intervention, sometimes I saw that you had to complete a block or to complete a piece of a city, so this is different. Yeah. Uh, so it's not, uh, I don't think they're more conservative. I think that there are different solutions in different parts of yeah, the city. I, I agree totally, but this is my point of view because I, I, I don't agree to say I, I, I am doing like this or this because I think every, project and every area demands a, a different approach with your own project. Sometimes it's good to be uh, more object, sometimes it's good to, to reduce your uh, architectural approach and to, to, to make a, a calm project which is uh, uh, inserted in the city, uh, city structure. Uh, and I think we, we have to uh, to be very careful uh, and uh, very sens sensitive in a way, uh, how is the proper approach in a certain project? And I think it's not possible to say, I am doing it 
uh, like this in all places. So I am, therefore I'm totally against the approach to, to uh, like it was done in uh, <coughs> in the. Um, in, in the Planwerk Berlin to say everywhere we have to close the block. Why? Because there are different situations and I think we have, it's maybe it's for a, for a first approach, it's, it's somehow to have an answer to all the different problems. But if you look closer, you, you have to, to find uh, uh, different answers to, to all these questions and different layers which we find in, in the cities. Yeah, definitely, because there are some occasions where completing the blocks can be useful, but uh, I mean, what is we are interested in very much is, in a way, even if sometimes we, we did projects where we completed the new urban tissue, in some way finding a way to involve the city in the building. Mm. So try to, even if it's a block, to involve the city in the building means try to to bring the city inside, so creating a public space, a public path, a public domain, a public square uh, somewhere. Because uh, what I think is very important that the, I mean, the residential building is different, but that can be, a, should be a relation between the inside and outside. And trying to, yes, to not to create just block close to the city, mm. but create structure that in a way can involve the population and in the space. I think um, your architecture is quite um, interesting in the, in, the, in the overall situation of architecture in, in, in Italy. Um, I, I don't know, I'm not so well informed about uh, all your colleagues, but uh, no, somehow, <laughs> <laughs> but somehow <coughs> really I find uh, 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 even the, uh, both projects are really courageous in in, in the figure and uh, different layers yes. and uh, and and the complexity of uh, forms and even in the architectural approach. This is gl a glass facade, which is a covering of. Uh, you did somehow this uh, curtain on the in glass Bologna. in Bologna. So uh, I, I I don't know. We wanted to give the, the building probably that you, is, we we have been very quick. We wanted to give to the building a kind of background role. Uh, it's very silent the building at the end. It's expressive but very silent. We didn't want the building to shut down, to shout, but to be background. So it's very neutral. The the facade are very neutral. Very. There are, there is a, a printing on the glass which is uh, comes from. Uh, a picture of a curtain. Mm -hmm. So there is kind of curtain that goes around. And uh, this is even the sunscreen. Isn't it's it? also sunscreen. It's a double it's facade, yes. It's a double facade and outside you have this printing so the sun doesn't come in. If you, if you give me the cause of that, yes. well, I don't know the cause. <laughs> Go back to your project. Oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't it's a blocker. work? Oh no, it works. I'll go don't. back to the first project. Maybe we can even open uh, the debate to the public. I don't know. Um, it's, um, uh, maybe there's any question from your side to, to us, to one of us. And, uh, you said that there is a debate about creating a center in Berlin. Did I understand correctly? Ah, oh, God. There's a, actually a debate going on at the moment in Berlin no. about. No. No, I think this, uh, maybe I wasn't so clear with my bad English, but, uh, no, no. Uh, Can you just refer to the culture form? Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. I think uh, the creating the center, uh, yeah, this is a debate, uh, uh, obviously, as we know, around, uh, not Alexanderplatz, but around mm -hmm. this, um, Max Engels Forum, um, this, but I don't want to make all this Berlin debates in this little discussion. <laughs> it's interesting, I but, learned but something. Interesting. Yeah, I learned something about Berlin. <laughs> but maybe we, we have no, a show. Yes, yes, I was again. talking about, there is a question. This is the facade we were talking about. This is all around, all the same, except the kinder, kindergarten, that I don't have the picture here, which is different, because there are childs. 
all their facades are all the same with these printings, screen printing. This you see, there's a kind of curtain. And you can go through this building nights and days, or in the night they close the doors. The night is uh, they wanted to make it live. Uh, so this is the canteen here, and the night is open the restaurant and the wellness center that is here. So there are parts of the building which are open also overnight, not the entire okay. night. The evening. Then, okay. Then they close. Because even this is, all, as we know, it's always a problem. Yeah, no, they wanted, to, uh, they, wanted to, to they wanted to open also in the night. So there is a chef that is open the restaurant. So next time when you are in Bologna, don't uh, go to the it's city open, center, no, but not only go to the, the mass to see how it is working. Uh, uh, yes. Because this is the problem. Uh, we, we, I think everybody here in this room knows Italy quite well in a certain way. But we know, I would say, we know only the city center, the historical center. Uh, we, we don't know the periphery. We this is normal, if if I I'm going to, to Rome, all my friends are living in the center, and you are living in the center, even this is no, an inter not interesting, interesting quarter because it's a quarter of the 60s. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> and it's uh, not exactly in the center. Uh, very nice uh, to see, but uh, if you go uh, outside of the center, then you are a little bit lost. <laughs> then no, you have this mind. certain feeling of, um, of um, yeah. Of the missing, missing urban mm. structure. Yeah, in Rome is very strong the missing of urban structure when you go out to the city. But center. if we think about Rome, we think of, of the historical the center. Huh. It's you so strong. strong. <laughs> A remark and a question. Uh, firstly, I think you very interestingly implanted a piece of urban texture into a city, and that I think is a very interesting and important approach. Coming back to what you said about Rome, that at the moment um, Rome tries to create uh, a number of urban nodes, I think you said. Yeah. It, does anyone uh, think of going back to the historical structure of the city? Because you have a, a whole um, system of uh, Villa Romane of these uh, <coughs> big uh, parks that used to uh, belong to uh, a villa, an agrarian <coughs> nobleman's um, tenuta, so yeah, to say. Yeah, tenuta. Does anyone, any one of the urban planners and architects in Rome think of going back to this historical structures? Because from there you could uh, re enforce uh, nodes that have been existing in the past? Yeah, the problem is, mm. no, this is a very good idea. The problem is that, uh, but, uh, the, the, all the historical tenutas or villas are, uh, <coughs> let's say, all the archaeological uh, remains uh, are usually fenced. There is a very big debate also on these things now because we have a lot of very beautiful monuments and archaeological sites uh, which are not really part of the public space because the superintendents, I don't know the name in English, the, the committee who protect the antiquities, uh, tends to fence them and close them from the city. So it's a open, happening the vice versa, which is instead of being sometimes, not every time, instead of being part poles for the city, they become holes. Uh, that mm. is, yeah, so this, so, and everyone is, because they tend to be very conservative, because they want to protect what we have, which are beautiful, I agree, but in, the, in this way, protecting and fencing, they become, uh, <coughs> let's say, separated from the city, the city background. Uh, in terms of structure, uh, what I want to say to you is that the city, what is interesting of Rome, for different reasons that now it's too long to explain, uh, the genealogy of the city, which is very interesting, I think, is based on few structures which are all antique. One of the main structures of the city is the Roman road structure, which is still drives, has been driven the ex expansion of the city for centuries, and still is a very strong structure for the city, together with the countryside and together with the topography. 
So there are three elements that come from ever that really are the, have been the driven force for the city till now. So this idea is good, I mean, it's a very good idea, but we have to, uh, to open up the, uh, these villas to the city, which are not. And not necessarily opening up the uh, space, but reorganizing yeah. the new nod yeah. around an already existing historical um, nucleus. Yeah. That was my mm -hmm. yeah. question. But the, uh, I, 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 uh, I think you, there was even another question in your question because the strong urban structure, the strong historical urban structure which we have in Italy in the historical center, uh, why isn't it uh, reused in the, in the new parts of the city? Here, everybody here um, look, uh, tries to to re, not everybody, but there's a big debate about this to ma re, um, make alive the uh, the city of the 19th century, yeah. and you you could even if you are growing you you can say why, why don't we uh, do our successful urban structure of the past why don't we use it for the future, is it or is it not uh, a debate. No, the, there is no debate there now. Is, there is no debate in Rome. There is no. For example, we did a project for the Biennale, for the Venice Biennale. Uh, they requested us a project on Rome. You saw the model, yeah. I think. We did a, a very uh, interesting investigation about the city, and we the genealogy of the city, the layers of the city. And in the end, we came up with a new urban structure, which is the structure of the borders, because Rome has a lot of big. Uh, is made of islands again, which one of the islands in the city center is one of the several islands, and there's a lot of big void, very big in the city, uh, which are still treated like uh, agricultural. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are all these islands, so we said probably we could reinforce all the borders, the inner borders of the city, mm -hmm. uh, creating a new urban structure which is superimposed to the. So, and we had a very big model which is. I think very interesting, and so there are. And this in the new structure was uh, was drawn because we draw it by hand. Was drawn on top of the old the Roman structure, all those structures. So with a kind of new layer of the city. Yeah, I have an idea. We don't have the Roman structure. <laughs> yeah. Every city has a genealogy. I think yeah. every city is a different genealogy, and. Uh, could be interesting to do as this kind of, we did for Roma, could be interesting to find out the genealogy of it, every different city. Because there is a DNA that is, is different for every city. That could be the starting point for the future. Okay. Well, I have a question for the, also the new nodes, nodes of the, in the periphery of Rome. You said you designed a model. We are designing one. And you said, well, the question is, what is a center? So, uh, or how can you design a center? And uh, of course, you probably all in negotiations with the different uh, stakeholders. Exactly. Of, um, but is there any kind of ideal um, solution that you have in mind that could uh, it could be a solution for it. It's it's in the periphery, right? It's a it's, it's a torre spalcata, o c'è una cinecittà, proprio yes. mm -hmm. uno sdrome nel dubbio di cinecittà, un giusto scolano, just a little bit northern. Mm -hmm. So it's periphery, not deep, deep. But it's just something that not ideal um, solution for a space like that to so create a city center. If you could do uh, the way you, if you could do it uh, without. Negotiating with a private landowner, for example, and also in relation to the two projects that you showed, which have an interesting ground and first floor, which always mm -hmm. have this kind of movement of lifting up the public, yeah, the public domain. to the first floor, and then you know have a double exposure of you know building areas to the public. So, is there something that uh, you can um, tell us about the, the ideal solution of that uh, city center that we design? I don't have a recipe now in my pocket, <laughs> no. But there are some ingredients that I wanted to share with Hilde and with you about 
what are the elements that we think uh, that are important, which is one of, uh, that we learn from our city, uh, from the Italian city, which is one is the complexity of the urban yeah. structure. The labyrinthine also way, let's say, the, the different scale, you have small squares, big squares, mm -hmm. small space, very narrow and very big. The complexity of programs, uh, superimposed or you, you can find uh, different programs in the city, also one on top of the other one. Then also the different level, there are, I mean, Campidoglio, I mean, overall, but there are the different levels of the city uh, that is also very important. Uh, but which is related to the topography of the city. Is, is related to the and topography of the city. Uh, it's not so easy to, if it's, everything is flat, to, to make So it's not, it's, there is not, I think, a model. There are mm. ingredients that, uh, and also the, the porosity, <laughs> the transparency. When we go in this big city now that have a lot of problems, like Brasilia, or, not Brasilia, now Sao Paulo, or Mumbai, and you go around, you, uh, you see that there is no scaling, there is all homogeneity, you don't have any reference, mm. you get lost. Mm. There is no references, there are no void, no scale, big, bigger building, there are no, there is just a, a big homogeneous complexity overall, but you don't have any reference. So I think there is no recipe. There are but some uh, the problem of, of the modern city is that the complexity of program is, 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 is not anymore. And, uh, and it's very difficult yeah, it's very to difficult. find uh, uh, even uh, uh, an approach to, to, to plan complexity. Exactly. This is very complex. Because there are maybe the we, uh, finance, we, finance. we have to go through uh, the process of um, uniformity and after years and years uh, uh, the offices are getting uh, Flats and vice versa, and uh, and the, the the ground floor is used in a different way. But to plan it nowadays, to it's plan so is difficult. It's so difficult. I can tell you. No, no. Uh, for the Kultur Campus, uh, uh, it was a really big debate uh, between the client and and the city, um, and the city forced the client to use the ground floor for public uh, use and obviously they are, everybody is telling but I don't earn money I, I want uh, I, I yeah. don't want to make a risk and this and that and our approach is always uh, that you propose a structure which can be changed in the future so I think it's very important to have a certain height even if you don't use it in this way, but maybe we don't know how how will work the city in fifty years. But uh, if if you have a certain structure, yeah. you can even change the situation. And yeah. and this this should be somehow the yeah, it can our matrix, yeah. um, fight in this campus. Yes. Any other questions? So are there any more questions? It's going to be a losing fight. Is me? It's going to be a losing fight because there is no need to counter the forces of finances who are driving the way cities are being built. I know if you, uh, Joseph Rickberg got the uh, RIBA gold medal two weeks ago and he got this wonderful interview talking about New York. He says, you know, the cities are being castrated by finance. Even New York, which used to be the most exciting place on the planet. Now, you can only live there if you make uh, an enormous amount of money, and that means that you only talk with lawyers or uh, uh, finance guys, so that not, not exactly the most exciting people on the planet. And this is happening pretty much everywhere on the planet, so uh, I don't see how you can, you know, it's a, it's a very Don Quixote situation to be in. I mean, you can Public try to tame it a bit. What? Exactly, exactly. No, yes, no, but exactly. in, in Germany yeah, yeah. it's somewhat exactly. considerable. Oh, but in most of the world it's, it, it isn't. Like, like for instance in Italy, yeah. it, it's just out, outside the realm of possibility because it, you know, the, the administration is so corrupt and that uh, mm -hmm. it's really outside, <laughs> it's, really, it's really possible. That, that, that's just outside the, the realm of possibility, I don't think. But Italy is changing now. <laughs> yes, with Renzi. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have a big hope in, in the Italian I mean, anyway, she's right. I think that the public role is very important. 
because the public role, I mean, the, the municipality, the government, uh, I don't know, the public po power is very important to preserve the complexity <coughs> and the richness of the city. Otherwise, it becomes all finance buildings. So, I mean, w for example, France, I don't know German too much, but France in this way, in this sense, is very, is very strong. They have a very strong public control on all urban intervention, all very strong and then the, the public has the, the power to give to, to to say to the developer this yeah. is you have to do a competition you have to invite I want yeah. to check the architects invite this is the programs you have to have so in France to be honest I mean Italian and France don't love each other so much but to be honest the France is a very strong public control of all the urban intervention but I would say uh, it's the only we, country here we try to to have this control too. Ah. I need to uh, know. If, if you make no. a, a, pub, a no, no. private intervention, we ha for example, we had to present our project twice uh, to our Senat's bow director, and uh, and there, this she has a, she has now uh, uh, nowadays it's Regula um, Lucia. She has a, a, a group of um, how can you say a, a, a consultant. Hmm? Consultants. Consultants. Yeah, a group of a little group of consultants, and uh, if you want to um, to do an intervention oh, in good. Berlin, especially in the center of a certain uh, mm -hmm. scale, uh, they force you to do a com competition do a or yeah. a presentation. Oh. But mostly, they try to um, to convince um, the private clients. Uh, or the companies they are not private, but the companies to to do a certain competition to get a little control. Mm -hmm. It's it's difficult enough, but it's it's a certain approach, and I would say it's uh, we have to fight with our <laughs> possibilities. Yeah, and, and I don't want to end, you know, somehow with a pessimistic no, no, uh, no, situation. No, no. Uh, no, no. I think. Mm, yeah. Also, because architecture is a progressive discipline. Yeah. Yeah, Otherwise, you cannot future. design anything exactly. So it's for sure. The the future in the, is in the um, is in the is in the uh, situation of today because exactly. you are thinking of of that what will be tomorrow. It's a very long discipline. You design something that happens in five six years. So yeah. you have to believe to the future, for sure. Okay, I, um, I think. It's I don't know if we are open to every bit, every question, uh, but maybe. I just didn't have a question. Um, we were just talking about this kind of bau collegium, yeah. which means you have um, um, certain colleagues founding a small group, and they are, if there are projects who are um, somehow complicated, means in scale and appearance, whatever. So there might be uh, the possibility to discuss it with a um, group of colleagues and the, um, the project has to be presented. And then it's consulting. It's just like, did you ever think about that? Or is it possible to change this kind of, uh, this uh, um, facade in a way that it's more whatever? So it's just consulting. It's not really kind of an obedience. It's uh, really consulting. Do we have a similar system in, in Rome? No, in the city. No, no. not at all. That could be also interesting. No, we don't. We are not used to that. That could be really interesting to to share ideas. No, we are not used. No, it's, it's, not, kind of thing, not, yeah, it's not kind of a hostile thing. It's really like um, talking about projects and um, making no, decisions. <laughs> what could be changed, or probably would be better, or would be more interesting to the city. You mean? Yeah. Now, I mean, if we did it, for example, we did it, for example, to the city uh, about the, these these new notes because we 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 think in the office that is really a kind of a mistaken approach because there is no. I, also, we did a kind of proposal. We wrote to the city. We we, we wrote a, a text, but I mean, no, it's not it's not usual. So, but there are also congregations like the BDA, of course, ah, where you uh, could try to, to get some influence in a, in a more public discussion. 
There is an order in the architects which I don't know sì. the name in English, uh, the committee of the mm. architects, I don't know, it's different the, from like the BDA. Like architect become. Archi uh. I don't know. Uh, the there is a kind of political chamber. role. Uh -huh. as a chamber. 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 chamber of architects, which is different from yes. the BDA, no? It's different. No, we don't have something like a BDA, no. You have the chambers that has a kind of political role towards mm. the city. Mm. It's a lobby. It's a kind of lobby, yes, but it's, it's a very weak lobby, so it's... Uh, we are, it's not a strong lobby towards the city. N not now. I mean, I don't know. The future book. It's not strong. Yeah, I would take this as a Schlusswort. So I would hope that this kind of dialogue we are trying to do here between Berlin, Italian, Italian Berlin architects leaves some positive ideas yeah. about probably getting more um, transparency transparency and public decisions. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and we go on. <laughs> we go on and we really go on. Um, dear Maria Claudia, dear Lena, thank you very much. For thank you to you, really, for this very interesting occasion. It was discuss. very strange to speak in English with you. But now we can start again with Italian. <laughs> <Italian. laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. If you want to recall this debate, we're going um, in all the details. Um, you will, you can watch the recording on YouTube okay. and Romeo as soon as we finish it. And you can also join the discussion on Twitter and Facebook. Okay, thank you very much. And um, talking about next dialogues, um, our next guest on the 1st of April, uh, Pier Paolo Tamborelli of Bauku and Wilfried Kühn here from Berlin, from <coughs> It's the 1st of April, you're very welcome. And now, thank you again. And yeah, let's share a glass of wine and some bread. And thank you. My dear, thank you.